<laughs> in this video, let's uncover conditional logic programming in Lutron Homeworks for spaces controlled with Faraday motion sensors. So, without any further ado, <laughs> let's do it. Okay, simply put, conditional programming is when I have an event that can be a button press, a contact closing like via a motion sensor, for example, or a time clock event, where I'll ask my Lutron homework system to first check a set of conditions. And if those conditions are met, I run a specific action. <laughs> and if those conditions are not met, I run another specific action or do nothing. It is very simple, you see. However, if it is your first time with Homeworks and Faraday motion sensors, I strongly advise you to watch our first video on how to wire and program Faraday motion sensors in Lutron Homeworks. Link in the card here or in the comment section below. Okay, here is my bathroom with multiple lighting circuits. And we would like to use our Faraday motion sensor to trigger a low level of illumination at nighttime only. Okay, so in the programming tab, I select occupancy in the drop down list here. And make sure to select my bathroom here. Now, since I'm going to trigger an action only if it is nighttime, which is a condition, I'm going to select conditional in the programming type here. The space underneath changes a bit, and in the Occupy tab here, I'm going to program what I want to happen when someone enters the bathroom. First step, I select Add Condition here. So, what condition I would like to check? Well, is it night time? To do so, in the If section here, I select Time Period, and then Time of Day. Now, I will create a period of time I will consider to be night time for the operation of my bathroom light. So, if time of day is from, and here I have multiple options, I can select a fixed time like 12 a.m. midnight, or I can make use of the built-in astronomical time clock that resides in any Lutron Homeworks processor to create my starting point based on sunset and sunrise time, which changes every day. In our example here today, I'm going to set it from midnight, 12 a.m. to 5 a.m. Then here, I'll add the action I want to trigger during this period of time. It then says, run action one. So let's define what this action will do by selecting the edit action button here. In the action tab, I remind my action to bath night on, for example and then customize my action, which is nothing more than a scene, really. I set the LED strip below the sink cabinet and my low-level lighting to 50%, just enough to find my way and use the toilet in the middle of the night. <laughs> Good. Back on the Occupy tab, I can say now that when I walk in my bathroom, bathroom occupied, homework system, please check what time is it. And if it is between 12, to 5 a.m., run the scene, bath, night, on. And if time is outside this period, well, do nothing. Actually, during daytime, I'll use my bathroom Lutron keypad, for example, okay? And what happened when I leave the bathroom? Well, for this, I now go to the Unoccupied tab here and do the same thing. If time is between midnight to 5 a.m., I'll run a new action, so I click on Add New Action here, Action 1 by default, then click on Edit Action to customize it, select it in my list of action here, and first I change its name to Bath Night Off. That will turn off those two lighting circuits. Then I have to go back to the Unoccupied tab and make sure to select it here. And if I'm really concerned about what happened if I walk in the bathroom just before 5 a.m. and exit after 5 a.m., like, are oh, my lights will remain on 
Well, here in the unoccupied tab, I can change the cutoff time to 10 minutes past 5, which should be good enough. Finally, remember to set your additional sensor timeout here. These refer to the time frame during which, if the sensor doesn't detect any motion, the Lutron system will consider the room unoccupied and execute what's programmed on the unoccupied tab. As far as light motion sensors only have a built-in timeout of one second, I'll set my additional sensor timeout to five minutes, which will technically make a total timeout of five minutes and one second. Et voila, very easy. Now, let's upload the program to test it. Today, I'm going to use my Lutron Homeworks demo panel to run this test. My Faraday motion sensor here is wired back to my Lutron contact closure interface. And those two LED strips here will be used to simulate the lights in the rooms of our tutorial. So now, if I walk into my bathroom, well, nothing happens, right? Because it is daytime. Now, if I go to the transfer tab on my Lutron designer software, here I can see the current time on my processor. To change the time, one way is to go to my computer date and time settings here and change the time here to, let's say, 2 a.m. Back on the transfer tab, as soon as I click on the set time button here, my processor time updates to my computer time and no need for a transfer. One important thing though, when you finish testing your conditional programming, always remember to reset your homework's processor to the current time and date before you leave the site, okay? <laughs> now, going back to my demo, if I now walk in the bathroom, I have my lights going to the level set in my bath, night, on action. With my lights under the sink, and the low level ones going to 15%. Remember? Just enough light to make my way to the toilet here without being blind by the lights. <laughs> and when I exit the bathroom, the additional sensor timeout kicks in. And after five minutes, the light go out automatically as set in an occupy tab. Nice. <laughs> Now, let's move on to our second example and improve things a bit. And if you like this video so far, make sure to give it a thumbs up and smash that subscribe button as this will really help the channel to continue making those kind of tutorials. Merci beaucoup. <laughs> in our second example, this time, let's say that in our same bathroom, I like to use my Faraday motion sensor to trigger a specific action at nighttime and a different one during daytime. In my Lutron homework software, back on the Occupy tab, to the condition I've previously programmed, I'm gonna go to the end if command here, click on the plus sign here, and select add else. And here, select add action. Then, in the run section, select add action and a new action one is added here. So I select edit action to configure it. Then select it in my list of action here. First, I name it bath day on. Then set my lights to a nice bright scene with lighting circuits between 75% and 100%. There we go. Also, in the assignable items here, I select fans to set my bathroom fan on and add it to this action. Cool. Go back to the Occupy tab and in the L section here, make sure my new action, bath day on, is selected. Okay, great. So when my bathroom is occupied, if time of the day is between midnight to 5 a.m., I'll run my bath night on action here. Else, meaning the rest of the time or Otherwise, I run my bath day on action. Cool. Now, in the unoccupied tab, I'm going to use the same method to add a different off action to use during daytime 
So I click on the plus sign here, select add else, then add action, add action here, then edit action, select action one in my list of action, I'll name it bath day off and set my lighting circuits as well as my fan to off. Now remember, timeout is the time I need to wait for the light to go off when I've exited the room. And if I want my timeout to be shorter at night time, so I have the light going off fairly quickly as I'm going back to sleep, but keep a longer timeout the rest of the time, in the bath day off action, I'm going to increase the delay time here. So to add five minutes, I'll add the delay of 300 seconds to all my circuits and fans. Now, those 300 seconds, five minutes, will come in addition to my additional sensor timeout here. And if I set the timeout to one minute, one plus five, during daytime, my light will go off after six minutes. You see what I mean? However, check this out. When I select my bath night off action here, between midnight and 10 past 5 a.m., my light will go off after one minute as my circuits have zero delay here. Nice. To recap, when my bathroom is occupied between midnight and 5 a.m., I run the bath night on action. The rest of the time, I run the bath day on action. Okay? And when my bath is unoccupied, when I exit the bath between midnight and 10 past 5 a.m., when my timeout of one minute run out here, I run the bath night off action and the light will go off straight away so the user can go back to sleep nicely. The rest of the time, I run the bath day off action that I don't forget to select here. See? So always double check and recap your programming before testing. So when my timeout of one minute run out here, my light will go off after a delay of 300 seconds, five minutes, plus the one minute of additional sensor timeout. So a total of six minutes, a longer timeout for the user. Nice. Now let's upload the program and test it. Okay, during daytime, when I walk in a bathroom, my bath day on action is activated. Lights are very bright. And when I exit the bathroom, the sensor timeout kicks in. And if during that time, six minutes, no motion is detected in the room, the Lutron system will execute the programming in the unoccupied tab and turn the light off. Very good. Now, same thing. I change the time on my computer to 2 a.m. again. Back on the transfer tab, I click on the set time button here to update time on my homeworks processor. As it is night time now, when I walk in the bathroom, lights turn on to a low level as set in my bath night on action in the occupy tab. And when I exit the bathroom, my shorter timeout kicks in and after just one minute, my lights go off. <laughs> That is very cool. In this third example, let's say that I have a hallway. On the main entrance end, I'm using a Faraday motion sensor. So when I arrive at nighttime and the lights in the hallway are off, lights will automatically turn on. And let's say that on the other end of this hallway, I'm controlling the lights from a Lutron keypad by the utility room here. Now, let's program Lutron Homeworks so my hallway turn on automatically only when my lights in the hallway are completely off. However, if I already have lights in my hallway that have been set to any other level by my keypad, for example, nothing will happen. So. I won't have an awkward change of illumination in a space that is already lit. And when no one has been in the hallway and my timeout runs out, well, the light will switch off automatically. Okay, back in my occupancy programming screen here, I make sure my hallway is selected 
and program type is set to conditional. So, when my hallway is occupied, first I'll add a condition to check the time of day. For example, if time of day is from sunset to sunrise. Therefore, night time. Next, I'm going to change the then command here to end. To add another condition that will also have to be true to continue executing the program. This time, I select lighting area and select my hallway, which by default is set to the off scene, meaning all lights are off. So, when those two conditions are met, and only when they are met, nighttime and hallway off, I run a new action. I select add action, action 1 pop in again, so I click on edit action here, change its name to hall on, and set this action to turn the lights on to my desired level when my presence is picked up by the Faraday motion sensor in the main entrance at night time. There you go. Back on the Occupy tab, I can check that when my hallway is occupied, if it is night time and the hallway is off, I run the all on action. Great. And during daytime, well, nothing happens. And if it is night time and hallway lights are already on to any level, nothing will happen too. Cool. Now, when the hallway becomes unoccupied, I'll simply add another action here. Same thing, add action, then edit action. And that new action, then I'll call hall off, will switch the hallway lights off. Back on the unoccupied tab, I make sure the hall off action is selected here and will run at any time of the day. After a timeout of, let's say, 10 minutes. Easy. Okay, so here is what we run when the hallway is occupied and here when it is unoccupied. <laughs> now, let's upload the program and test it. So, during daytime, when I walk in my hallway from the main entrance, nothing happens. Good. I change the time on my computer again to 11 something p.m. Just to make sure it is after sunset. Now, at night time, when I walk in my hallway from the main entrance, the lights go on to the level set in my whole own action. Quite bright. Now, if during that time or at any other moment between sunset to sunrise, we set the light in the hallway from my Lutron keypad, for example, to any other level, as we can see here, where the scene has now changed to a lower level, some of the down lights are off, but we still have the light overall in the hallway. Now, when I walk in from the front door, the lights stay where they are, since the hallway is not completely off. However, when the sensor stops detecting motion in the hallway, timeout will still kicks in, and after the set time, my homework system will turn the lights off. This type of programming can be very useful if you want your sensor to turn on the light only when you walk in a dark space. That is very convenient. <laughs> voilà, there you have it. How to use occupancy with your Faraday motion sensor using conditional logic. Those examples should give you the basis to use conditional logic in your Lutron homeworks project. Well, I hope you find this video useful and if there are any other features you would like me to present in the future, <laughs> please let me know in the comment section below. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe to the Adelux YouTube channel so you can be updated when the next video is released. Thank you very much. Good luck and talk to you again on the next tutorial. <laughs>